for grade, uh, we are familiar, or uh, we know that the grade is a system for rating uh, quality of evidence in systematic reviews and guidelines, and grading strengths of recommendations in guidelines. Uh, this system is not only applicable for clinical questions of therapy, but also it is considered to assess the certainty or the quality of evidence in a wide range of research questions, including diagnostic, prognosis, equity, values and preferences, qualitative research, among others. Also, in addition to the rating system, GRAY has also designed formats to report uh, evidence summary in a transparent and structured process in systematic reviews and guidelines. And he represented this, uh, how we can see this, this evidence summary in evidence profiles and summary of finding tables and evidence to decision framework. And we will talk today, or we are talking today about the summary of finding table. Um, in the grade approach, um, as you know, randomized controlled trials, so RCTs start, start uh, has uh, high quality evidence and observational studies has low quality evidence supporting estimates of intervention effects. And uh, five factors, uh, may lead the, uh, to rating down the certainty of evidence, and three determinants may lead to rating up. So the five determinants to rating down the certainty of evidence are the risk of bias, the inconsistency or uh, heterogeneity, indirectness, imprecision, and publication bias. And the three determinants that can increase the certainty of evidence are a large magnitude of effect, uh, confounding or opposite implausible procedural bias, and those respond a uh, gradient. In the end, the certainty of evidence uh, for each outcome falls in one of four categories from high to very low. So similar to uh, Meta-analysis, it is important to assess the certainty of evidence um, in network meta-analysis. To assess the certainty of evidence in NMA, the Great Working Group has developed a framework where through three steps, researchers should rate the certainty of evidence of different pieces of information. The process starts with uh, assessing the certainty uh, for the direct uh, estimates. In this first step, you need to assess four gray domains, risk of bias, inconsistency, indirectness, and publication bias, using the same approach that is applicable for intervention studies. Um, after you make your assessment in these four domains, if the overall assessment is high, as you can see here, and the direct evidence contributes as much as indirect evidence, you can move forward uh, to assess the certainty in the NMA or for the NMA estimates. Uh, for the NMA estimate, you can or you should assess the incoherence assumption and the imprecision domains. If the judgment of the, uh, for the direct evidence is moderately low or very low, you must assess the transitivity assumption uh, in the, uh, for the indirect uh, estimates. Finally, after you evaluate this assumption, you go to the final step where you assess the imprecision and uh, domain and the uh, incoherence assumption for the NMA estimate. So this is just a brief explanation about how to assess the NMA, the certainty of evidence in, in network meta-analysis and further explanations and details uh, can be found in the references that we will provide with these uh, slides. I think the other question um, related to um, um, the following fact, uh, um, um, when you rate the indirect estimate here, and basically um, what, um, um, what Juan has shown here is the, the general process of rating the certainty of the evidence in the network meta-analysis, and that is a sequential process. So you rate the direct estimates, and then you rate the indirect estimates um, in case that you don't have high certainty of the evidence. Because if you end up with high certainty of the evidence here, um, there may be little use for decision making at least, unless it's an academic purpose um, to go to the indirect estimates. But um, if it's moderate, low or very low, the indirect estimates will become very important. 
Um, and there are two um, concepts to distinguish. Um, one is obviously the, um, um, the um, um, inconsistency between the direct and the indirect evidence, and the other is, uh, is um, transitivity, um, which basically means that if you look at the different types of comparisons, do the orders um, make sense? Um, are the comparisons, are the relative estimates of the effect consistent when you look at different parts of the network or the different loops? And what this part relates to the lowest of the ratings of the two direct compar comparisons forming the most um, uh, dominant first order loop um, is essentially that when um, um, you have concerns, of, in particular when there are concerns about intransitivity, um, that um, 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 you, you are using the lowest certainty of the evidence um, from the two direct um, comparisons, and there you use the, um, we say, first order loop, which basically refers to the um, best type of data, the most direct um, of the indirect data. So if there if there if there is intransitivity, you use the lowest rating of the two um, of these two direct comparisons in order to appropriately present the evidence. Because once you find that there is only indirect evidence, you have two pieces of indirect evidence. Um, you cannot just if you don't have good reasons to pick one over the other, you really should be expressing the lowest certainty in in the evidence by picking the lowest of the of the direct um, of the direct comparisons that's kind of the rationale behind it <laughs>